This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com, home of the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips on the web. Follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and with this video we're going to start a series of tutorials on the Photoshop Pen Tool. The Pen Tool is one of the most powerful means of creating precise selections in Photoshop. I'm not talking about the natural textures of hair and leaves and grass, but rather the complex geometric selections of man-made objects, the human figure, and anything else that has smooth edges. Photoshop's Quick Select and other related tools are fantastically powerful, especially in creating soft, organic selection edges. But when you need a smooth edge, either straight or curved, there's nothing like a vector path created with the pen tool and with related vector tools like the shape tools. In this series of videos, we are going to work our way from the basics to pen tool mastery, but we need to start with the fundamentals. In fact, in this video, I'm not even going to use the pen tool. Instead, we'll spend our time understanding how paths work in Photoshop, so that when we do start using the pen tool, we'll be on familiar ground. Here's an image of a car on a dramatic background. However, this car was lifted from another background entirely. Because the car is a man-made geometric object, a vector path could produce a much more precise selection outline than any of the pixel-based selection tools. Here we'll open up the Paths panel, and you can see that I have a path outline that I've drawn of the entire car. When I click on this path, it becomes active and you can actually see it superimposed on the image. Now this path is not part of the image, it doesn't print, and it won't export into another image, but we can use it to create selections. If I click on this path using the black arrow tool, otherwise known as the path selection tool, we can see that the path is made up of lots of points. It took some time to lay down these points, but not more than you'd spend working with the Quick Select and Refine Edge, and the result is a resolution independent path that makes a great selection. To load this path as a selection, we can click this icon in the bottom of the Paths panel. Now that we've created the selection, let's zoom in and we can see how smooth this selection really is. Now I'm going to deselect this selection, and I'm going to switch to the Quick Select tool. Using the Quick Selection tool, I'll go over to this section of the car and create a quick selection of this area, and we'll compare the results. Now Quick Selection does a pretty good job, but you can see that the edges are a little bit ragged in some areas. We could go around and add and delete sections, but it just doesn't produce the kind of smooth edge that we need for a metal or plastic object like this car. So we'd be much better off using the pen tool to create a path for the selection. But the pen tool is scary, right? It does all kinds of weird things, right? Well, it does have a learning curve, but it's not as bad as many people would have you think. In this series of lessons, we're going to take it slow and work our way into it, starting with the basics. Many paths don't require fancy capabilities, so you'll be able to start using what you learn right away. Once we have a handle on the fundamentals, we can start adding features and capabilities one thing at a time so it doesn't get too confusing. Before you know it, you'll be drawing paths like a pro. So let's talk about some of the basics of paths, and we'll leave the pen tool itself out of the picture at the moment. Instead, I'm going to use something far less intimidating, the rectangle tool, located over here in the tools panel. The Rectangle tool is a vector tool, and with any of the vector tools, we need to set up the options before we start to draw. The first and most important option is this one here at the top. This drop-down list with three choices of what we'll draw with the Rectangle tool. The last choice is Pixels, and in this course, that's the last choice and something that we don't want. If I choose pixels and drag out a rectangle here on the image, we have nothing but a bunch of colored filled in pixels painted right onto our background. That's no help for us, so I'll undo that with Control Z or Command Z. The first selection in this list is shape, 
and this draws a special kind of path-based object, actually creating a layer as we draw. We can see that there's a colored fill and a stroke, and we've created a new layer here. This is a very important function, but it's more than we need for learning about paths and the pen tool. I'm going to undo this as well, and I'm going to hide this properties panel. I'm going to choose the remaining option here, and that is Path. This allows us to draw an ordinary path. If I drag out here on the canvas, here's the path. Now this path is not on a layer, and it isn't part of our artwork. It won't show up on a print, and it won't show up when we export this as an image from this Photoshop file. It's simply a construction tool that we can use for other things, like creating a selection. Notice the way the path is made. It has four black dots on the corners, and these are called the anchor points. There are line segments connecting the anchor points. We can interact with this path by using the path selection tool, more often known as the black arrow tool. With the black arrow tool, we can click on this path and we can move it around anywhere on the canvas. If we click off the path, it's no longer selected, and we don't see the anchor points anymore in the corners. The path is still here, but it's deselected. If we click it again, the anchor points turn black, and we can once again move this path around. We can move individual anchor points as well, but for that, we need the Direct Selection tool, otherwise known as the White Arrow tool. Clicking the White Arrow tool on an anchor point selects just that point. Notice how the other anchor points are changed and are now hollow, and only this one is solid black. Now, using the white arrow, we can click and drag this point around. When I release the cursor, Photoshop warns me that I'm about to turn a live shape into a regular path, and that's okay for our example, so I'll click Yes. Notice that even when we move the anchor point, the connecting paths still follow a straight line from one anchor point to another. This is how paths work, and these anchor points are called corner points because the paths coming out of them are straight lines. Now let's choose another shape tool. We'll choose the ellipse tool and we'll draw another shape here. Notice that the ellipse consists of four anchor points as well, just like the rectangle, but these points have curved paths connecting them. If we switch to the white arrow tool once again and click on an anchor point, this is where some people start to get a little spooked. But the anchor points on a curved segment work the same way. If we click and drag them around, the curved paths connecting the anchor points still remain connected. When I release, I'll get the same warning that I'm turning the live shape into a regular path, and I'll click Yes. These other little segments with dots on the end are called handles, and we're going to leave these for a future lesson. For now, you can avoid them, or you can click on one of them and see what it does. Don't worry if your shape gets funny looking. Just press Ctrl Z or Command Z, and you'll be back to where we were. We're going to cover these control handles later. For the first few lessons, we're going to focus just on straight paths. Now a couple more points regarding the white arrow tool. You can click directly on a path, and you can move that path around. If it's a straight segment, you're moving the entire segment and both anchor points that are connected. If it's a curve, you're going to actually change the shape of the curve. You can drag a marquee with the white arrow tool to select multiple anchor points and then move them together as a group. You can even select multiple points from multiple paths, and again, move them all together as a group. If we switch back to the black arrow tool, we can select each path individually and independent of the other. Now, let's see how to create a selection. To do that, we need to open the Paths panel. So we'll go here to the Paths panel, and I'm actually going to bring this out onto the canvas. In fact, I'm going to make it a little larger, and I'm going to open up the panel options and choose a larger thumbnail so we can see a little bit more clearly what's happening. First, I'm going to change the name of this path, which will save it. 
We'll call this one Geometry. If we click away from the path here in the Paths panel, it deselects this work path and it no longer appears on the canvas. If we click again, it becomes visible. Remember, this path exists within Photoshop only and it isn't visible in a print or an exported image. To create a selection, we can click on this icon at the bottom of the Paths panel or we can simply control click or command click on the path thumbnail. Notice the selection that we created is a combination of these two items, but we can change that behavior. I'm going to deselect by pressing Ctrl D or Command D and then click on this path to make it active again. Now I'm going to use the black arrow to highlight the ellipse and I'm going to look up here at the options in the toolbar. The path operations here are set to combine shapes, and that's what we saw. But we can change this to subtract front shape. And when we do, you may notice a difference here in the thumbnail. But if I control click to load this as a selection again, we can see what's happened. The ellipse area was subtracted from the area that was the rectangle. I'll deselect this again and re-enable this path. And I'll choose the ellipse, and then we'll try another option, Intersect Shape Areas. Once again, we see the change here in the thumbnail, and when I control click we see the result is just the overlapping intersecting area. I'll deselect once again and choose this ellipse, and we'll try the final option, which is to exclude overlapping areas. This time, when I load this as a selection, it looks like all the paths are present. But what's selected here? If I fill with the foreground color by pressing Alt Backspace on Windows or Option Delete on a Mac, we can see what is really selected. And that is all these areas. And notice the area of the overlap is not included in the selection. Again, I'll deselect and press Control Z. One final word about loading paths as a selection. If just one subpath is selected as I've done here, and then we load that as a selection, it will load just that particular subpath. Also, as long as a path is selected here in the Paths panel, any new shapes that we may draw are going to be drawn on that same work path. So here we've created another path right here on the Geometry work path. If I deselect this path by clicking away from it and now draw a new path, we can see that this new path creates an entirely new work path. We can call this one Leaves. I'll draw a couple more shapes here on this work path. And you can see that the shapes continue to be added to the currently selected work path. Clicking on either work path will show us just the shapes that exist on that work path. Now what if we needed these leaves to be combined with the other paths? We can copy and paste from one work path to another. Just choose the black arrow tool and select the paths that you want. Press Ctrl C or Command C, switch to the other work path and press Ctrl V to paste. And now we've got these paths existing on the other work path as well. These are the fundamentals of working with paths. In the next video lesson, we're going to break out the pen tool and start drawing paths with that tool. When we do, you'll be glad you had this lesson as a warm-up. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tips, tricks, and various information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.